Hello and welcome to my video today. I recently did the 2025.14.1 update, which covered my update that happened last night. However, in the last couple of months, there have been other minor small updates such as 2025.8. And I didn't cover those at the time because there were a whole bunch of them. And most of the updates were either minor updates listed on the screen or just nothing listed at all. So I figured I want to go through that and talk about some of those changes. And a lot of them are also undocumented. So uh, those get discovered um, after the updates go live. So if we go to 2025.8, there's for the new Model 3, which of course I don't have. I have a 2018 Model 3 long range rear wheel drive. So if you have a newer vehicle, there's a change for the standard ride and handling in autopilot. Your vehicle will now automatically transition to standard ride and handling when autopilot is engaged for a more comfortable drive. This setting is enabled by default to disable tap controls, dynamics, use standard ride and handling in autopilot. Then there were minor updates. View your last 10, 100 or 200 miles of energy usage in the consumption page with the option to clear your history. So let's go into the app launcher down here. Let's go into energy consumption right there and then there's the consumption button here so now you can switch between 10 100 and 200 miles so that is an interesting addition so you still have your park and drive features too so you can switch between those definitely a nice addition if you want to get more data on your driving efficiency the first row cabin sensing system has been updated to use cabin radar, which is now standard in all new 2025 Model Ys. Your Model Y was pre-equipped with the necessary hardware, allowing Tesla to bring this technology to your vehicle. So this is for Model Ys between 22 and 24. Your battery's energy estimate now accounts for your vehicle's usage characteristics and will adjust over time based on your history. The total available battery energy remains unchanged. So if you go to the top of the screen here and the normal uh, battery is listed right here, 49. So you can list that and it switches between uh, miles and percent by just pressing this here. So for example, mine at 49% is showing 141 miles, which gives me an estimate of around 282 to 285 miles on a 100% charge. Now this number used to be more locked onto the EPA number and you used to have to use the energy screen to get kind of an updated number based on driving and other factors in your uh, car such the uh, outside temperature and so on. So it appears that they're now accounting for this in the main battery uh, number right here. Don't know if that's good or bad. I guess we'll have to see over time to see if it affects us in our normal driving. You can now run a battery health test to measure your battery's energy retention compared to when it was new Running this test may recalibrate the energy estimate, which could affect your displayed range. Go to Controls, Service, Battery Health. So if I go right now, go to Service, and then all the way at the bottom, we see Battery Health. Then it has this long thing here about that. So you can read that. So if you did want to do it, you press the blue button right there and it'll do a battery health test. Uh, I haven't done any of these uh, tests on my batteries and it uh, could take quite a while to do. So I recommend doing this on a weekend or when you don't plan to use your car very often 
um, so it can run that test and do its thing. And lastly, the update includes important security fixes and improvements like they say in every update. Now, let me clear all that out. Now for undocumented changes. There are new map icons. It says that icons on the map are being slightly redesigned to be less elongated. They now also feature a white border to make them easier to see when the satellite imagery is on. This feature appears to be rolling out slowly, so you may see it on specific zoom levels for specific icons. Let's look at that real quick. If we look on the screen here, it does look like the icons now do have a white border around them. And I'm zooming out here. Yeah, slightly a change in that. So don't know how big a deal that is. If they didn't tell me, I probably would not have noticed. There are additional tool tips. Tesla has added some additional tips to the screen to show up in certain cases. For example, if you're playing audio over Bluetooth, Tesla will suggest that you use their built-in music apps instead of streaming through your phone. Not sure how helpful that is. Next, we have destination charging. Destination charging icons are now visible on the map if you have points of interest enabled. You can enable points of interest by tapping on the map and choosing points of interest icon on the right near the satellite imagery icon. Some destination chargers may charge a fee while others may be exclusive to customers. So let me just tap the screen here. And if I click on the charge icon now, there will be charging on the screen. Depends on your level of zoom. So if, if I'm at this medium zoom level here, I can see chargers right here. If I click on it again, I can switch between the superchargers and the um, slower charging here. You can turn those off and just see one or the other, or you can have all of them on. For example, now I just have the L2 charging and you can see those right here. Navigation improvements. If you're using Tesla's navigation system with voice guidance, the spoken directions will now stop immediately when you end the trip instead of finishing the phase that's being spoken. Improved Rainbow Road. The Rainbow Road feature has been greatly improved in this update. Rainbow Road, which can be enabled in the Toy Box app, changes the vehicle's path on autopilot from blue to a rainbow. Since the rainbow path didn't have the full features of the blue path, Tesla had previously overlaid the blue path on top of the rainbow. However, with this update, the rainbow path now incorporates autopilot features such as arrows when suddenly slowing down. <laughs> if you use Rainbow Road, I guess that's uh, an improved feature. I don't use Rainbow Road, so I don't think I'll ever uh, <laughs> actually notice the difference. Next, we have service mode release notes. The HV battery panel update moved state of health routine. The state of health routine in the HV battery panel has been moved to the controls service tab, which does not require entering the service mode or service mode plus. I showed that previously as one of the features of the minor updates that you can go in service now and do the battery check. Windows panel update, rear defrost routine. The rear defrost component on the Windows panel has been updated to simplify diagnostics. The re-enable routine will now be visible all the time, but it can only be ran when the condition required its usage is detected. Next, we have seats panel update, cabin radar, and seat sensor. The seats panel has been updated to show whether the cabin radar and or seat sensor is being used to detect occupants in the front seats. Brakes panel update, update gateway configurations. The gateway configurations for brake hardware type and caliper cover are now being updated on the brakes panel. Steering panel update, 
update gateway configurations. The gateway configuration for the steering wheel column motor type can now be updated on the steering panel. Service mode update. We have the media source switches to Bluetooth. When entering the service mode, the media source will now automatically switch to Bluetooth to prevent the vehicle from playing media using the customer's connected media accounts. Charging panel update, charge port ECU reset routine. The charge port electronic control unit or ECU reset routine. Test reset CP has been added to the charging panel, which may be required after performing a charge point related service. Additional transparency effects, which are undocumented. On Intel vehicles, there were several modules that didn't include a transparency effect. This was mostly due to the Intel cars not using the blur effect since it could slow down. With this update, Tesla has enabled the transparency effect across the set of modules. Notably, this fixes the issue when using the full screen visualizations where the music player had a transparency, but the navigation module did not. A transparency has also been added to other modules that are displayed on the top of the map, such as the list of superchargers, destinations, search results, and the ETA end trip module displayed at the bottom. Note, due to the lack of the blur effect, these changes could make some text more difficult to read on Intel vehicles. Car transparency, which is also undocumented. When a card is overlay on top of another one, it's now transparent. Note, since Intel powered infotainment units don't use the blur effect on these cards, it could make them harder to read since the contents of the cards underneath can be seen. Next, we have the energy app, which is also undocumented. The update energy app now features the ability to choose the history based on the previous 10, 100, and 200 miles. The graph features smoother curves, tension when viewing shorter distances, and the total energy used at the bottom left also changes based on the chosen distance. You can also reset the graph at any point by tapping on the information icon and choosing reset. No phone key, which is undocumented. The graphic that's displayed in the vehicle when it doesn't detect a phone's key has been updated. Tapping on the blue text at the bottom displays the old animation of where you tap a key card. Bluetooth player, which is undocumented. The Bluetooth app normally only displays the connected devices and a button to connect a new device. With this update, Tesla makes it easier to jump to other sources by displaying other available music services beneath your connected device. Tapping a music service will jump to the selected service. Trip in odometer, which is undocumented. The trips display has been improved to show more precise information as well as a new metric. More precision. The current drive and since last charge trip meters now display decimal points, which is often useful for these metrics since they're usually smaller values. The current drive meter is automatically reset when your vehicle comes out of park so that it can track your current drive. While the since last charge meter automatically resets after a charging session completes. More data. In addition to added precision, the current drive now features a new data point. Kilowatt hours is now shown for the current drive, just like the other trip meters. Previously, the current drive showed minutes instead of kilowatt hours. Now it features both. These changes affect the trips widget on the Model 3, Y, and Cybertruck, while the added precision is also added to all vehicles under controls and trips. The new kilowatt hour metric for the current drive is not displayed on this screen. So if I bring up the little cards area here, you'll see now that the kilowatt hours is listed for everything here. And we also have the watt hours per mile listed below that. So that's on the screen right here. If we go into trips, you'll see the same thing. So that's where we go there. 
And the last thing we have is traffic visualization undocumented. The traffic visualization has been improved with this update in some regions. The visualization has been improved slightly with thicker lines and rounded corners. In addition, a new yellow level of traffic is now displayed in addition to orange and red. Tesla recently made traffic visualization free for everyone and it no longer requires subscribing to Tesla's premium connectivity. To see traffic visualization, simply tap on the map and choose the traffic light button on the far right side of the screen. So if we're on here and I click on the traffic, that will be on here. So if I did have a route, it would show that information. Or if I zoom in, here's an example right here. And also up here. You zoom in far enough, you'll see those colors. All right, well, that was a bunch of stuff that I didn't talk about on the previous updates because I didn't uh, see them as most of them were either undocumented or in the miscellaneous category. So I hope this uh, gives you a good update of what's been going on the last couple months since some of the bigger updates. If there's any other updates coming in the future, I'll be doing videos on those and letting you know how they affect your vehicle. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.